Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be taking an early look at a new series of mecha model kits that's coming out called the Canda Squad Unit. So as you can see, what I've got here today is just going to be some of, this is obviously not how they're going to be sold. These are just some early production models of this new series. I've got a few of them that we're going to be taking a look at here today. And so the purpose of this video is just kind of to show you guys what you can expect with these. But obviously, again, this is not the final production. So obviously there'll be more packaging and uh, the instructions will be different. I don't even have the printed instructions here for these, uh, but I've got a few samples that were sent to me to try out, to build and share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get into it here for today's video. Right, so I can't really do a kind of standard unboxing for these because obviously there's no box to unbox, but I've got, I think, six different sets that I got samples of that I'm gonna be showing you guys what they look like all built up. I'm just gonna show you a few of these just as runners, just to kind of give you guys an idea and a figure I'll put some pictures on the screen too, just to show you guys what some of the kind of early images are of these kits. And there's a couple of really cool things that you can do with these. Obviously, one of the main things with them is going to be the compatibility with them. So kind of like what Kodobukiya does with a lot of their kits or Bandai does with their 30 minutes missions kits in particular, making everything very cross compatible. These kits are going to have like shared runners and shared parts, which makes customizing them, swapping parts and kit bashing basically very easy between all of them. So for example, we'll have have runners like this one here in gunmetal for some of like the joint parts and then we've got like this runner here in gray which is just a bunch of different like uh, adapter pieces or joint pieces so like mail to mail uh, ball joint joint pieces a c clip to ball joint uh, pieces here some little like uh, connection point uh, cap pieces and stuff so you've got those each of the sets also comes with a display base here so you've got your parts for the display base in gray and in clear clear for the connection arm gray for the actual base plate and there's some connection pieces for that there as well there's also these parts which i'll show you more about later which are actually meant to house a magnet in here so that you can stick the display base here onto your fridge or whatever and then have the kits displayed in that way there'll be a picture of that on screen just to show you guys so unfortunately I don't have the magnets but I believe the magnets will be included with the kits if you're buying them as just like a standard retail release later on it just they just weren't included with these just being kind of pre-production samples some other stuff that are common runners between these kits here is this runner of weaponry which features like a small SMG a regular kind of uh, rifle and then a long rifle like a sniper rifle and a handgun and a knife right there. So that's gonna be kind of your standard weaponry, which is gonna be shared. Some of them have like different uh, custom weaponry as well, but that runner you'll see. And those are gonna be kind of like the most shared common runners. We also have this runner of clear parts, which has like a few different parts here for the visor. So again, this is another shared runner that depending on the kit will be in a different color. So like sometimes it's clear orange, sometimes it's clear green, sometimes clear red. And so if you wanted to use the particular visor part for a particular head, for one, you can have it in a different clear color. If you have multiple different sets, maybe you have this in different colors. So maybe for this particular set, it's meant to be clear green. But if you have that same runner from a different set, it'd be in clear orange, which does also look really nice. So you could just swap that part really easily. And then we have all the parts for the armor itself, which is gonna be molded in color. And as you can see with a lot of really nice detail on these. So these are going to be small for sure. They're quite small. I think probably comparable in size to the mobile suit ensemble, like candy toys from Bandai. But you can see there's a lot of really great detail on these. And just taking a look at a few of the runners here, for example, like here's parts for the head and you have a couple of different options uh, there for that. Parts for the arm and shoulder armor here, for example, on this runner. And then we even have this runner here for all of the kits, which is a pre-molded kind of like an RG style inner frame runner where you have two uh, multi-injection. So that means that these joint parts, which are gonna use for the knee and elbow joints on the kits are gonna be pre-molded together as a movable joint piece. And that said, if you didn't want to use these ones that are pre-molded together, you do have uh, what is basically the exact same parts here on this runner if you wanted to just build them as normal. So you have options there for that. And we'll take a closer look at that once we get to the review. But yeah, I've got sample imagery here for the first three main releases, which is going to be the Barking Hound, the Chariot General, as well as the Gauntlet. And these are basically going to be like your Gundam, Gun Cannon, Gun Tank kind of styled uh, kits, sort of. And then we'll see a couple of variations of those as well as some extra parts that are gonna be available to basically make different variations of them that are available just as part sets. And so yeah, let's get into it and take a look at what the built samples are gonna look like. 
All right, and so starting off here with the Barking Hound, which is kind of like our standard like Gundam type lead of the series, at least at the moment anyway, that's what it would appear to be. And just to give you guys an idea about the size of this, here it is compared to your standard 144 scale Gundam kit. Comes about up to the knee or so, so not even like half the height of an HG, which means they are going to be very small. But again, you can see just a ton of detail here on these. As it is, just the colors of everything do look really nice. But with all that detail in there, you can see uh, painting this and whether you want to mask or hand paint in all those little details and everything certainly going to make it look even that much better and then of course there's all the customizability options that we have with this but just to give you guys a nice look here around the kit now it is fully articulated and that we have a moving uh, head here at the top the shoulder joint is on a ball joint that will swing around you can move the arms up and down you can also bend the elbows and the knees again those elbows and knee joints are that uh, pre-molded joint which is a little bit tight and i can lift the skirt armor up here at the front we can bring the leg up and again for the size the articulation is not going to be anything like super crazy but it's quite good again with the size in mind the feet are just connected via ball joints and while those pre-molded joints are pretty tight as in the movement the mobility of them that's one kind of point where it is a little bit loose at least so far in that uh, the peg is just the tolerance is not quite right the peg is just a little bit too small but just putting a little bit of paint or glue around that will tighten will make this uh, plenty tight and that uh, part won't be falling off there but as it is and that's the case i've found with all of them that i've built here all six uh, five sets five different like uh, bodies anyway after just building a few of these i found that they were all the same but again this is not uh, the final form so i believe that that uh, issue has been already been brought to their attention and they already were already working on fixing that so once you guys are buying the uh, commercialized versions of these later on uh, hopefully that will be fixed for you here for this particular one the backpack is kind of a little bit more unique point for this as it is sort of similar to the atlas gundam i guess in a way just the way that these parts can kind of open up you have these thruster bells which can move here on that part as well. Now, as for some of the accessories that we have for this one, we have these uh, shield parts, which you can use this attached onto the side of the arm as a shield. And basically you would have to swap this joint because that pre-molded elbow joint doesn't have a hole in the side. But if you use the actual uh, parts, as I was mentioning about, then you can attach this attachment piece in there. Basically, you'd have to swap out this elbow joint here for this one, which has the peg on the side that you can attach the shield onto for having onto the side of the arm. But if you attach this different piece here onto the back, you can attach these onto the backpack sort of as like a sort of hazel style like booster shields. So we can do that by taking the backpack here, uh, removing these parts and then just plugging our shields onto here instead, which is pretty cool. Gonna look something like that. Like I said, I do like that a lot. It's very cool. And then for some of the weaponry, we've got our standard loadout of weapons, like I was saying, which is going to be the set that you get with every single kit. Now, one really interesting thing about these is that if you'll notice that circle part right there, that's actually a separate piece. And I'm just gonna pop that back out of there actually, because without this teeny tiny piece inside of there, that basically gives you a hard point. So if you wanted to have this stored on the kit somewhere, have it like attached onto the backpack or the side of the hip or something like that, that just gives you a hard point. You can just plug it onto somewhere for when it's not in use but when in use or otherwise you just pop that piece into there and then you've got that hole filled with a nice little detail piece so that looks pretty cool this is going to be just kind of our standard rifle then we've got another one here which is a more kind of like smg looking weapon here and then got a little uh, handgun pistol and all of these have that same detail with that hole that part that you can pop out of that hole for storage on the kit or wherever if you want to We've got the knife, which is just a single piece here as well. And we do have a connection piece for storing the knife onto the kit too. That's just gonna be an extra piece on the runner. And then our sniper rifle here as well, which also looks pretty cool. And just for a size comparison, just to the kit, you can see that's gonna be about the height, uh, close to the height of the kit itself there for the size of the longest rifle there. We've got some hand options in here as well. The holding hands and these open hands seems to be the standard set of hands that we're gonna have with all of the kits. I'm not sure if any later sets will include some additional hand parts, but at least with all the sets that I got, these are the only hand option parts that we have. Would be maybe nice to have some closed fists or something possibly. So just in case, maybe if you didn't wanna have anything actually in this hand, it would just look like a proper closed fist rather than just kind of an empty holding hand there. And then with this kit in particular, we also have these kind of bazooka 
good looking weapons. We've got two of these, so you can use these, uh, you know, in one in each hand, or we actually have this connection piece to allow you to connect the two together, which is very similar to like that extra set that you could get for the full armor Thunderbolt Gundam that had like the two bazookas strapped together kind of thing where you can have those attached together and there's a handle on here kind of for carrying them like that. And that's not all, because if you didn't want to have these as bazookas, you can actually take that part off slide this part kind of all the way in like that and then just take this different piece and attach it into the back end of here like that and basically just make it into a large handgun here instead of some sort of like large rifle so kind of cool i definitely prefer these as the uh, bazooka but it's kind of cool again to have options and then for the display base so like i said we have some cool options going on with this basically for these one two three four five holes in there you have these uh, cap pieces, which you can put in uh, from underneath. You just pop that in and that will fill that hole. So I've left the center one open while these ones here on the side, you could leave those open as well or attach different stuff into there, but you can just fill those holes with these parts, which is nice. And then here on the back side where the magnets are meant to go, you have these pieces which you can put in there to cover that up, basically to keep the magnet inside of there. And then again, you can attach this to your refrigerator or whatever. A couple of other option pieces would be like this, like a nameplate card here, which is kind of what I'm guessing this is basically for. So that will attach onto there. So say you, ha you have your kit, kit stood on here and then on this piece, you can attach that and just kind of fold it up like that. And then you can have, I'm guessing they'll probably come with like a sticker or something that you can stick onto there uh, with like a name card on it, which is kind of interesting as well. I've also got a couple of these little connection pieces. So if you have multiples of these, you can connect the bases together using these connection pieces. So you could have a bunch of these all connected together. And then the clear part, which is going to attach into there. We have one point of articulation up here at the top with this connection piece, which will fit up uh, right underneath the waist section. You can of course rotate that or whatever. Also, if you didn't want to have this connected directly up into the kit and you wanted to have kind of like a longer display arm, you can connect this piece onto there instead, which at the top has just a straight peg with another point of articulation. You can also, instead of that, you can swap it for this piece, which gives you a ball joint at the end, which will obviously allow for even further articulation, although I feel like the peg is probably the safer bet for a stronger connection. But cool to see that you have a lot of kind of options built into just a small little simple display stand here as well. Next up, the gauntlet which is basically sort of like our gun cannon of the group here with these big cannons on the backpack looking very cool. Again, hard points here on the back of the skirt section, also on the back of the head. You'll see why there's a hard point on the back of the head on a different set later on. But again, a ton of really cool detail around here on this one. The color is also looking really nice. Now, again, I'm also not sure how the colors might vary for the commercial release later on. So just take that with a grain of salt. But I think basically this is the colors that you can expect to see the kit in. And it look really cool here with the kind of orange clear part there for the head on this one. Now for this, again, all of the base plate parts are all exactly the same. The hand and weapons parts are all also the same here as well. And so basically that's going to be it. We do have a couple of different option parts kind of left over from some of the runners that are obviously, like I said, gonna be recycled between the different kits. Like here, for example, if you didn't want these round sort of gun cannon style shoulder armor pieces like that, if you prefer just some square ones, like this, you can use these. These are actually the shoulder parts for the uh, gun tank style, the Chariot General, which we'll see up next. That's basically where all these different like leftover option parts are gonna come from that I'm going to point out to you guys. There's more uh, leftover parts than what I'm gonna point out here, but for example, instead of these hands, if you just wanted these claws, sort of similar to like the early tank gun cannon, gun cannon, right? Yeah, early tank, early type gun cannon had a similar kind of claws like this, you could swap those. And again, also similar, you could swap for these kind of like multi, I don't know, machine gun or like multi-launcher kind of hand parts here. Instead of those being hand parts, those could also be on these kind of missile pod pieces here like this. So you have these missile pods, which we're going to see again, uh, used for the gun tank type one, but basically these parts here have a few different options like this sort of like uh, ray dome looking piece, but you can take that off and swap that for different pieces like that part here like this part which is like uh, missile doors and you could swap that with this piece here which is with those missile doors open like that having those launching out on the back side just kind of like this vent detail part here so different parts that you have available as options and this is just a hard point that can attach 
onto the side of the kit or onto anywhere on the kit really. I think if we attached an elbow joint into there and took off the arm, you could swap your whole forearm for this. You might have to trim down that peg a little bit in order to get it to work, but you could have this as an actual arm piece on there as well, something like that. Anyway, you get the idea, there's plenty of options there. But again, those are all just pretty much leftover pieces that you can do with whatever you might like. A couple of more points to point out about the articulation as I showed in the first one, the front skirts do move, the side skirts and back skirt don't move at all. And for this kit in particular here, as you may have guessed, the cannons do move forward and back, so you have a point of articulation for those as well. Right up next then for the chariot gauntlet, here is how this one's going to look. There's those missile pod parts like I was mentioning about, they're attached here onto the side of the tank tread. So you kind of have like your two big tank treads and these two little ones here at the front as well, just to kind of help balance. And then you can actually change up the pose of this a little bit. You can actually swap the parts around to be a little bit different. And then we've got the two big cannons up over the shoulder, kind of similar to the previous one. Those will move up and down, but different design there for those. And again, the head on this one also will move up and down and all around. In the midsection, you have point of articulation there, kind of as normal. The torso is all just kind of like your standard normal build. And again, highly customizable. You could attach different parts onto here for the cannons, different parts onto the sides for the missile pods there. Again, for example, if you wanted to have those looking like they're open and firing, you can swap out that part there at the front. If you wanted just the regular hands instead of these claw hands, you have those. You could swap out just regular hands and then have it holding onto a different weapon or something like that. Because of the way that just kind of the design of this one, you kind of have to have the arms a little bit more out to the side rather than like kind of straight down, which would be kind of normal. But again, just like what we've seen with the past couple of ones, we just have a ton of really cool detail on there and a really interesting look here for this one. A lot, and again, a lot of articulation built into such a small little package here with this. Basically kind of everything moves on it. And of course we have the same display base that can be used with this one as well. This one that you probably would want on the ground. If you do just want it just on the ground like that, you'll notice there is no hard point here on the bottom. So what I would do is just drill a hole and then you can just use this hole right there to just make a connection piece and just kind of attach it right onto the base there or something like that. Yeah, these front tank treads, you can also rotate those to kind of change the angle, the main tank treads, you can rotate these to be in kind of whatever angle you may prefer as well. And there's multiple different points on here where you can attach parts. So this one is capped off. This one is where we have this part attached onto. So you could choose if you wanted to do something different with that. And we've got some cool option parts that you can use for this one in the option parts set, which we'll get to in just a moment. That covers the first three, but then we have a couple of variations as well. So this one, as you may notice, is a variation of the first one, which is exactly the same except for a couple parts. It doesn't have the V-fin part at the top. Instead of the V-fin, we have this piece here, which is going to plug in, which will cover the eyes. I just wanted to leave that off for the moment, just to show you guys the clear red part that you have for the eyes for this particular sort of like low visibility flight type version of the first one. I'm not sure what the name is or, or anything for this one, but you have a different part there for the front of the head. Also, the back skirt is going to be slightly different. With this being a flight type, you have this much larger back skirt section there. Otherwise, the rest of the body is going to be the same, just in slightly different colors. That's why I think it may be some sort of like a low visibility as well as being like a kind of flight type uh, suit. But again, we've got all the same weapons, all the same display base, but some different equipment here with this one. So you have basically this kind of like a fighter jet here, which is folded up and this is kind of how it's meant to be in like kind of a park state and you even have this like landing gear here for that and it's got the wings folded up so it's kind of cool this can be just like a separate unit but if we remove the landing gear part off the bottom then these wings are going to fold up and back like this and you have the rifles mounted underneath the wings you can omit those if you want but this is basically going to be like a separate flyer which can fly along as a separate unit you could attach this onto your display base like that but basically this is going to become its backpack so you can actually separate the front part off of this here like so just take that off and then this becomes the backpack of the unit here like this and attached onto the kit is going to look like that giving it the full flight type look and then we also have fuel tanks to add onto here so these have just the like thruster bells there at the end but if you preferred you can actually omit those thruster bells and just put these cap pieces on instead and just have them as just like fuel tanks without these uh, thruster nozzles on there you can cap all those off 
So you have some options for that. And you don't necessarily have to use all three here. There comes this piece to clip three of them together. And we actually have two sets of three. So you'll have six in total that then you can connect up underneath the bottom side, the kind of the back of the backpack up into here. And that'll give you the full effect of having all those connected onto the backpack. Each one of those little thruster nozzles is on a ball joint. So you do kind of have to adjust them accordingly. You may just want to glue them in place so you're not having to constantly have to mess with them. But again, that's your full effect there on the back, which is pretty cool looking. I do really like this one a lot. Again, like I said, these rifles are uh, just optional. You can take those off there and have those in hand. And because there's two, there's meant to be one on each wing. That means you actually get two sets of the weaponry in this one. So you have two sniper rifles, two SMGs, two handguns, two knives, all of that here with this set, which is pretty awesome as far as the variation goes. Our other variation here, which again is gonna be using all the same parts for like the body and most of the parts for the thighs, the waist section, the arms, uh, just different parts here for the shoulder armor for this one. And this is going to be a aquatic type. So as you can see, much different uh, backpack here on the back with these kind of water propulsion vents there at the backpack and also swapping the lower legs for these kind of aquatic uh, leg boosters here with the fuel tanks attached to the front. If you did want to not have those fuel tanks attached onto the front, which again are the same fuel tanks that we saw with the past kit, but instead of the thruster nozzle at the end, it's capped off with that cap piece. You can opt to use the thruster nozzle instead with this one if you did want to, or you can remove that part entirely and just attach this part here to just cover up that knee section without that. But I do think it's pretty cool with that having, with having that on there. But again, with this, instead of having the V fin on the front or that uh, extra like flight fin, we just have the front part left empty. And instead we're attaching this piece onto the back of the head. So I mentioned earlier about the hard point in the back of the head, that's for attaching this piece, which is essentially like a Vulcan pod here that we have attached onto the back of the head. The new shoulder armor features this kind of fin off to the side here, which is very cool. But again, the waist section, the torso, and mostly the head is gonna be all mostly the same. So it's, again, it's just reusing the different parts for these different variations, obviously in a different color here this time. Also for the back, we have an option part here. These are meant to be like little missile doors. So you can swap that for this part right here, which has it looking like those kind of missile doors are opened up and the missiles are kind of like firing out of there. So kind of cool option part that you have for that. And again, all the same weaponry is included and all the same parts for the display base is included. Hand parts as well, also going to be the same, the open hands and the holding hands. I mentioned earlier about a piece for holding the knife when not in use. And so this is just an elbow joint piece that you could swap out where the connection piece for holding the knife is attached into the elbow. So kind of like instead of where you could attach a shield onto the side of the arm at the elbow joint, you could attach your knife onto the side of the arm uh, for this one, for example. And then for an additional piece of custom weaponry for this one, we have this big harpoon gun, which is just going to be held in the hand. Pretty cool looking. And we actually have two of these, but uh, if you attach the handle, not at the same point, but if you attach it at the front part, then you can actually put these two together and make a kind of a double harpoon gun here like this, which is pretty cool. The harpoons uh, are a piece that you, of course you can take out of there and just have that handheld as just kind of a handheld little knife or kunai kind of weapon in the hand as well if you wanted to do that. But again, really cool and different custom variation using all of the same kind of base parts underneath everything. So obviously any of these parts could be mixed and matched between the multiple kits. Now we've got one more set here, which is an option set. The parts in this option set are mostly going to be either for the gun cannon or the gun tank type, the gauntlet or the chariot general here in the case of the chariot general. For example, we have these construction arms. So instead of the cannons, you can attach these construction arms here onto the back. And then from those, we have these parts here, which has a kind of uh, wrecking, like spiked wrecking ball kind of hanging from there. And it's meant to be molded at an angle so that it looks like it's like kind of hanging there loosely. But if you wanted to have it look like it was actually swinging that, you could swap that for this curved piece and attach this onto here and just kind of rotate it like that. And you can make it look like it's actually like swinging that uh, spiked ball at the end, which is pretty cool. So that's one of our option parts for that. Also have for here at the front, this kind of bulldozer attachment piece, instead of the extra set of tank treads right there at the, at the front, you would take that off and swap that out here for this option part right there which matches with the construction look and then for the hands you can swap them for these drill hands so we have these like a uh, drill bit style hands for both sides of course as well as these kind of like uh, hook hands here too which is an interesting option 
to have in there also. So some different options there for that. Also options to swap the main tank treads here for wheels. And these are actually like spinning working wheels here. So it will be on just wheels instead of tank treads. You can swap that part on the side and then on the front, swap the front tank treads here for this kind of uh, racing sort of uh, front of there to turn it into sort of like a racing type and then to make it go even faster here at the back end you can attach some thruster bells into the back of the backpack into there like that to again make it go fast so basically the option parts here for the chariot gauntlet are to make it as either like a fast moving wheeled unit or a construction type unit so pretty cool options for that and then the rest of the option set is going to be basically for making like a full armored version here of the gauntlet of like our gun cannon type so you're going to swap the feet for these much larger and towed feet here so much heavier looking and then around on the lower legs you're going to attach these parts around the existing legs it's basically again kind of like uh, alex style chobam armor that you're adding onto here so additional armor around the legs and these sort of bits here on the sides meant to look like a kind of cooling unit or something i guess an optional part here to add for the front skirt again kind of like chobam style alex gundam looking uh, front skirt armor there that you're going to attach onto the front and then for the front of the chest as well we're going to attach this piece onto the front of the chest. You could actually, I actually had that upside down. It attaches onto the front of there like that. And for the shoulders, you have shoulder missile pods. So you have this for the left and the right side with the shoulder armor closed up like that. But then you do also have uh, that with this opened up. So to, if you wanted to have it make it look like it was actually firing missiles out of the open shoulder armor there like that, you can have that. And then at the back skirt, we're going to attach this piece, which has a hole at the side and the hole is meant to have a hose coming out of that, which uh, again is something that I think will probably be included with the final version of this. I didn't get it included with my set, but sort of like a attachment hose that is going to be leading up to our large mega cannon here so for the backpack we're going to swap the cannons that we have on there now uh, for the left and the right side for the right side it's going to be just this kind of radar this is just that same missile pod part that we've seen before but with this kind of radome attached onto it like that cool new parts for the left and the right side the right side here obviously being this very large new cannon and this can actually kind of open up if you have this just not set in there quite all the way there we go you can make it look like it's kind of opened up like that as well and there's a clear part inside there for that and uh yeah hose part will, is meant to be plugged up into there so it'll go from this part here on the back skirt and then it'll run up into the cannon up there the cannon is attached via a ball joint so you can aim that around anywhere and then there's a connection arm and everything there for that so this will be a cool one i'll just be leaving like this one like this for right now but uh later on i do want to try attaching on some of these parts to make like i said kind of like the full armor version of this and that's everything that we have for this option set anyway guys so i know it's been a long video taking a look through each of these different units but i hope it's been interesting for you guys to kind of have a first look at this new set of model kits that's going to be coming out i think it's really interesting very cool a lot of great detail on these they're small yeah but i think that the really great thing about them is just the designs are cool the details on them is amazing and just the customizability with them of course is going to be one of the main points that is going to be so great all the parts being so interchangeable and you can make your own custom variations as we saw there's already a couple of variations that we have here and variations that you can make using the option part set but there's of course infinitely more options that you could do as far as mixing and matching the parts so there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with this set so it's something that i think will be very interesting to see the reception of these kits what do you, what do you guys think about them let me know down in the comment section below are you excited or excited to check out some of these i don't know what the price point is going to be for them quite yet obviously with them being like relatively small i think they should be pretty affordable probably about the price of your standard high grade somewhere around there would be my guess i don't know quite yet but i think these are meant to be coming out in about a month or two so be on the lookout and aside from letting me know if you're just looking forward to these in general let me know which of these first five main kits you're most looking forward to down in the comment section i'm just kind of curious as to which of the designs might be the most popular among you guys but that's going to do it for this video hope that you guys enjoyed taking a first look at these kits i'm going to play with them a bit more and then hopefully i'll have the opportunity to paint one or two of them if i can find the time to kind of squeeze it in between everything else but i would love to custom paint at least one of them uh, here as
as well. And I'll definitely share that with you guys if and when I do. But for now, that's gonna do it for this video. These obviously aren't out yet, but we will be getting them here at USA Gundam Store. You can check the link to USA Gundam Store down in the video description below. If you're watching this video later, maybe we do already have them, but at the time of recording this, just check out everything else cool mecha model related there at the website in the video description. And for now, guys, thank you so much for all of your support, liking the video, leaving a comment, and also making sure you're subscribed. It really helps out a lot. I really appreciate it. Until next time, hope you guys all have a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye guys.